Bond questions show up a lot on the FAR exam, but the good news is that they're very logical and calculation-based. So once you catch the theory of it and it clicks for you, they're going to be a lot easier and a lot more predictable. So in this video, I'm going to explain some basics about bond accounting, and then we're going to go through a full bond example, write out the journal entries for every year of the bond, and write out the amortization schedule. So the basics of a bond is you are receiving cash because it's a form of debt, so you're debiting cash. You're then crediting bonds payable for the face value of the bond. Now the face value is often different from the actual cash proceeds. This is because the stated rate of the bond is different from the market or effective rate. So the stated rate is what the cash payments are for the bond. So your cash payments stay the same each year. They're going to be the stated rate times the face value of the bond. But the market value is what someone else could receive for a similar bond on the market. This is where we have discounts or premiums. So if you're offering a 5% stated rate and the market's offering a 6% effective rate, then that means that your bond is offering a less rate. So you're going to have to issue your bond at a discount. And then vice versa, if we're offering a 4% stated rate and the market's offering 3%, we're offering a better rate, so then we can charge a premium for the bond. So then throughout the life of the bond, we're going to be amortizing the bond discount or the premium. And the way we figure that out is we calculate the interest expense, and then we take the difference between the interest expense and the cash, and that's the amortization of the bond. So interest expense is going to be the uh, market rate of the bond times the carrying value of the bond. The carrying value is the bond payable initial amount, uh, and then if it's a premium, plus the premium, or if it's a discount, minus the discount. So then throughout the life of the bond, your premium is going back down to its initial face value, or if it's a discount, it started below the face value, so then your discount is being amortized, and the carrying value is going back to its initial face value. So either way, at the very end of the bond, it should be back at its face value, because then what happens at the end of the bond's life is you have to pay that face value of the bond. So then at the very end, you simply credit cash and debit bond payable for the face value. So now let's take a look at a full example of a bond and go through all of the journal entries and write out the full amortization schedule. So let's consider this bond situation here. On January 1, year 1, Bluestone Corp. issued 6% seven-year bonds. This is the stated rate used for the interest payments with a face value of 300000 So we know that each year we're going to pay 6% of 300000 $18,000 of cash payments each year. The bonds pay interest annually on December 31st of each year. The bonds were issued when the market interest rate was 5%, and the bond proceeds were 317359 So we see that the market rate is less than the stated rate. So we're offering a better rate than the market, meaning that we get to issue our bond at a premium, which is more than 300000 Now the best way to tackle any bond question is to write out an amortization schedule for the entire life of the bond. This helps you to really conceptually understand bonds super well and to answer anything that the question is asking for. So this is what an amortization schedule looks like. You start out with your beginning carrying value, which is the 317359 and then you calculate the interest expense. We find interest expense by taking the market rate times the beginning carrying value for that year. That's going to be the debit to interest expense for the year. Next is the cash payment, which is simply 18000 each year. It's the stated rate of 6% times the face value of 300000 So that's going to be the credit to cash and then debit to interest expense. So the difference between those two is going to be the amortization of the bond premium. So we just take the difference between the two to find the amortization. So then we have the beginning carrying value, and then we're going to subtract out the bond amortization for that year, and that brings us to our ending carrying value. So then year one's ending carrying value becomes year two's beginning carrying value. So let's see what all these numbers actually look like. So we start out with this carrying value here. Year one interest expense is 15868 
that is this 317,000 times 5%. And then our cash payments are 18,000 each year. So then in year one, the bond premium is amortized by 2,132. So then it's going to decrease from the 317,359, decrease by 2,132, and end up at 315,227. So then for year two, the beginning carrying value is year one's ending carrying value. So then we use this amount for the interest expense. So year two's interest expense is 315,227 times 5%. So we can notice a trend that over time we are amortizing more and more of the bond premium. That's because over time the bond's carrying value is decreasing because we're going from the initial 317,359 back down to 300,000 at the very end. So if you want to make sure you calculated it correctly, then at the very end, you should be back to your full face value of the bond, what you recorded for the bond payable. So over time, the carrying value is decreasing, which means that we're taking 5% of a lesser amount. So then our interest expense is decreasing, but the 18,000 stays the same. So the gap between the interest expense and the cash increases over time since cash is staying the same and interest expense is decreasing. So then by the very end of the bond, we've paid out 126,000 of cash and we've recorded 108,641 of interest expense. So we've amortized the entire bond premium of 17,359. So now that we've gone through this amortization schedule, let's see how it applies to all of the journal entries for the bond. So the first entry is always the initial entry for the bond. So we credit bonds payable for the full face value of the bond. This is how much we have to pay back at the very end of the bond. But we issued it for 317,359. So it created this premium of 17,359. Premiums are credits and then discounts are debits. Then we look at the end of year one entry. We're gonna pay out cash of 18,000 every single year. And then the interest expense is the 5% of our initial carrying value of the bond. So we can find it either here in the entry, or we can just see here in the amortization schedule. So then the premium is amortized by the difference between the two. So at the end of year one, we then have a carrying value of 315,227. So when we get to the end of year two for our interest expense, that's the number we use for the interest expense. So we're using the prior year's ending carrying value for that year's interest expense. So it'd be 15,761. The cash stays the same. So then we amortize the premium by 2,239. So then we have a year two uh, ending balance of 312,988 meaning that the year three beginning balance is the same number. So we take this times 5%, and that's gonna be your year three interest expense, and cash once again stays the same. So we can see in year three that we are increasing the amortization. We get to year four, and we do the exact same thing. We have a lower interest expense because the carrying value is now only 310,000. So then we have a higher amortization of the premium. And then year five, the same applies, we're multiplying 5% times 308,000. So we have a lower interest expense and a higher amortization premium. Year six, we're multiplying 5% times the 305,000, which we can find here. And that brings us 15,279. And then we amortize 2,721 for the premium. And then we get to the last year where we are down to 302,857 take 5% of that for the interest expense, and then we amortize the premium by 2,857. So at this point, we have amortized it all the way back down to its face value of 300,000. So then what do we do at the end of the bond? We have to pay back the bond payable amount. So we had simply credit cash for 300,000 and debit bond payable for 300,000. And then the bond is fully done. We've paid for everything and everything is off our books. So the cost of raising this money of 317,000 was the 
uh, 300,000 that we had to pay back at the very end, uh, plus all of the cash that we had to pay back for it. And we can see that um, our overall cash was 126,000 and the interest expense is 108,000. So we had the amortization for the difference between the two. If this were to be a bond discount, your interest expense would be higher than your cash amount rather than lower than your cash amount. So I would encourage you to apply this approach to any bond question because once you do this two or three times, you're going to become really comfortable with the entire life of a bond. So I hope that you've learned a lot by going through this full example of a bond. Now lease accounting is quite similar to bond accounting, so be sure to check out my full video on lease accounting. Thanks.